Hello game developers and gamers, my name is James and in this video I'm trying to answer a question that David asked me on Patreon this week and it's about how we can create multiplayer games with Phaser 3 or just generally how we can create an online multiplayer game in the browser. In this video we're not going to do any coding this is just a single video trying to explain the concepts behind it and what it takes to create an online multiplayer game. When I create games, the way I like to think about it is that the player is just communicating with his machine, with his computer. And the game's job is to visually give feedback and to create a communication channel that's fun and interesting. So when I say communication channel, I just mean where do you get all the information from and where does your input, for example, jumping or walking, where does your input go to? In a single player game, your input stays on your machine, all the code files, all the images, animation, everything that you need to play the game, it's on your computer. So the communication channel is very short, it feels like it's not even there. It's right here, everything is on your computer and you're like in your own little bubble, which is why nobody else can see your progress in the game, nobody else can see what you're doing. It's a single player game. For multiplayer games, there needs to be something that tells all the players what the other players are doing. There needs to be something that takes all the inputs from all the players and calculates and decides what are the consequences of these inputs and then shares the result to all the players. That is the job of a game server. So in a multiplayer game, not only are you communicating with your machine, you also have a communication channel going to the game server and back. Probably the most two common ways to establish such a communication channel with a game server is either through regular pinging or through a socket. Pinging means you regularly send a request to the server and the server answers you then. A socket on the other hand is a continuously open communication channel between the client and the server where the server is constantly listening to inputs from the client and the client does not need to make a, a ping request. A very common method for pinging in browser games is doing AJAX calls. And you have this method not just in, in browser games, you also have it in many, many websites where, for example, if you type in your username in a registration form and the, the, the website checks if these usernames are taken or not, most of the time, every time you type a new letter, it sends ping requests to the server and asks the server, hey, is this name already taken or is it still available? And to create sockets for browser games, probably the most common way to do it is to have a node.js server and use the socket IO library to create a socket communication. I didn't research this, but I would say that most of the .io games on the internet, they are using this approach where they have a Node.js server running and they use the socket.io um, library. I have created online multiplayer games with both methods. However, having a good Node.js server for me, it's very expensive, which is why I discontinued my Node server. And right now I only have a web server on which I can run PHP. So that's why my I cannot show you the games that I've built with um, Node.js and socket communication. But I have released two multiplayer games, real multiplayer games using the pinging method last year. One of them is called Chase the Shadow, which is a 1v1 arena game with wizards. And the other game that I released quite recently actually is vocab rpg it's an online rpg almost like an mmo and it's very heavily inspired by pokemon where you have to go out and search monsters capture them and then use them to battle but you also collect vocabulary cards and during combat you can if you choose so you can to answer vocabulary cards and it will hopefully help you learn a new language so doing Ajax calls or having a socket channel with uh, your Node.js server, these are just technical terms to describe how is the player communicating with the game server. 
Now, disclaimer, there are big differences between pinging a server and having a socket communication with the server, but to not get sidetracked, I'm just going to ignore these differences. But once you get into the technical details, there are a lot of differences. Just keep that in mind. So let's say you've established a communication channel with the game server. What's next? On a very basic level, the server is like the game code where the server decides what happens, who lives, who dies, who wins, who gets how many points, who successfully jumped over the gap. The fact that the game server decides all of this, this is called server authority. And it is very important in online multiplayer games, especially in browser games, because if the client simply decides the result and then sends the result to the server, for example, like, oh, I hit the enemy player, he dies, I win, then it is possible that the player becomes a hacker and changes the game code on his site, on his computer, to send wrong results to the game server. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have abilities with cooldowns and you have a very strong ultimate ability with a one minute cooldown. All the code that the player has on his computer, this code is available to him and if he is good enough, he can change the code. So he could make it so that his ultimate ability doesn't have a cooldown anymore. It's always available. He could remove the mana cost. So if you let the client, which means the player's computer, if you let the client decide what he's allowed to do and what he's not allowed to do, he can start changing the code and send wrong results to the server. And then you will have a player who is spamming his ultimate ability every second and killing everyone without any mana loss. So what is the alternative? The alternative is to only send inputs to the game server and the game server checks everything and calculates all the results and then sends the result back to all the players affected. So in our ultimate ability spamming example, the player could change the, the code on his computer that his ability costs no mana, has no cooldown, but when he presses click on his ultimate ability, this input goes to the server and then the server checks. Is your ability ready yet? Do you have enough mana to use this ability? Or for speed hacking, the player simply says, I want to move forward. And then the server checks, okay, can you move forward? How fast do you move forward? Now you might think, okay, great. So the solution is very simple. Only send inputs to the server. The server calculates the game consequences and sends the result back to the player. However, there is another problem with that. And that is the time it takes for the information to travel to the server and back to the client. And when you play a game like League of Legends or Counter-Strike and you have a ping of 100 milliseconds or more, you're already complaining about your ping. Because it's true, you feel the delay. Now in browser games, it is very possible to have a ping of 500 milliseconds or one second or even more. That could very well happen, especially if you use the pinging method through Ajax calls. And now imagine the gaming experience, the player clicks forward and then has to wait one second or longer until his character starts moving or wants to activate an ability and has to wait that long. That is simply unacceptable for a player. So the solution is called client prediction. Client prediction means that every time the player performs an action, his game will run the code as if it was a single player game but it will still send the inputs to the game server. Then the game server will calculate also what should be happening in the game and sends the result back to the player. Then you compare the client code with the this result that you received from the server. And if there is a difference, then the result from the server will overwrite what the client calculated on his computer. So for you as a player, it is still possible to hack the code and you might even see something completely different in your game than what the server has calculated. But the important thing is that all the other players, they will only receive the information from the server and the server will only share information that's correct. So coming back to the big question of this video, how can you create an online multiplayer game, especially in the browser? 
First of all, you need to know how to code a communication channel with the game server, which means either through Ajax calls or you learn how to do Node.js and learn how to use the socket.io library. Then whatever the programming language on your server is, for example, for my games with Ajax calls, I have PHP running on my server. If you use Node.js, you have JavaScript running on your server. So you need to be able to write the code, the actual game code on the server so that your server can always calculate and make sure that the game is running correctly. And the last step is to do client prediction where you still execute the game as if it was a single player game, but you listen to the server's responses, compare that with the client code and make sure that you overwrite the client's code if it's wrong. If you can code these three steps, you can make online multiplayer games in the browser right now. And this also shows you that creating an online multiplayer game, it immediately doubles your code because you need to have the game code on the server side as well. It takes a lot of preparation. So for me to make a step-by-step -step tutorial about it, as I do with Endless Cave, that takes a lot of preparation. It's going to take a while until I could start such a tutorial series. So anyways, I hope for now this video was helpful to you. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. And please like this video, share it with other game developers and let me know your feedback, what are your thoughts on the concepts that I have explained here. If you want to get more in touch with me, please follow me on Twitter. I post game stuff every day and join my Discord server. We're always chatting there about different game stuff and game development things.